Hello, so in this video I'm just going to explain the low poly, high poly workflow. So for example, some detail like this, uh, where the low poly has the, the edges hardened uh, in Maya. So something like this uh, here wouldn't actually uh, really be necessary. You would have a high poly version of this thing where it's more you know, rounded. Um, like that and basically the low poly version is going to be sharing the the normals so much that this looks really soft uh, all the way around and what happens is because the high poly is holding the geometry nicer so let's just say that is the this is the low poly one with all these edges all really smoothed out. It will look strange in places and like some kind of really bent shading, uh, trying to make its way around these objects. Uh, it will look strange that way. But if you've got a high poly version of it where all of this is a bit tighter, so let's just say you've got that and your high poly is really holding this edge more because you've got more edge loops in that part uh, you let your high poly drive that normal um, to be uh, the way you want it so I'll make a little example just to show you uh, why um, this is important for things like this uh, so I'll try to imitate that same idea here um, so the, the same applies to everything so this will have the shared normals with the back here and so on. But the high poly version will really kind of hold on to that shape and it will have more polys. And when that gets baked, the normals are transferred to this lower one and it copes better and you don't get a, a kind of edge seam, even if there's no uh, UV edge or anything, um, then it will hold nicer. So the reason for that is, uh, for example, if you lose your smoothing groups for any reason, um, then at least you know that everything's got the same smoothing group. So if I make a box here, I was build a simple box. All right, and imagine this is the edge of this, the way it was in low poly. It's got a hardened edge, right? And call this box low and I'll just move everything to zero here um, and I'll do the unwrap. I'll just do an automatic uh, unwrap like so and just make sure I've got some edge padding right. So the main thing here is that all my hard edges, all my hard edges are seams right. And let's just do a little comparison. So this will be a poly box low uh, SG, oh, uh, HE, right, for hard edged. It's got these hard edges, right? And then I'll make a copy of this to make a high poly. I'll just call this box high, which we'll use for both cases. So I'm going to edge loop this to support it so that when I subdivide, it will um, hold the shape, right? If I don't have these extra edges here, it will just you know collapse into some kind of ball. Um, I think that's it. Yeah, so I can put one or two more here, just in the inner part of each. And now when I use Turbo Smooth, which is same as same as Mesh Smooth, you can see it's smoothing these edges. I'm going to do it one more time, and then I'm going to use Relax just to make it even more rounded. I'll do one more smooth, right? So we've got this, I'll just collapse everything in a poly. We've got this high poly one, right? And now I'll take the same box and I'll call it SE for soft edged. And I'll choose all the edges and soften them. So smoothed edge. You can see how the normals are shared between faces, right? all shared. Now let's see what happens when I bake uh, e 
either one of these. So I'll just put everything to zero. Uh, move that zero, zero, zero. And let's just export selected. And let's call this boxes. Okay, and make sure you've got your smoothing group enabled. Obviously that's the main thing. And also triangulate, we'll use triangulate just to make sure that it holds the correct triangulation. Right, that's done. Uh, I'm going to marmoset set tool bag three or four, whatever suits you. And I'm going to import uh, those boxes. Right, so I've got the three boxes here. Uh, I've got the the high poly, the low, uh, the hard edge low, and the soft edge low. Right, you see how the normals are all combined here. Right, and let's bake to see some tests. So this bake will be called um, uh, bake hard edge. So we'll put the hard edge into low, and the I'll just create a duplicate of the high. Or I can always do that. In fact, I can always just um, use the same one. Let's just drag that into there, right? So we'll do this test first. I'll hide this one. Let's just turn off the automatic bake so that we can make sure the cage is all right. Uh, we can see all these. So you can see how the already like the the box is bigger than this, so we don't need to worry about the cage too much. So I'll bake uh, just a normal map here. And I'll just leave all the defaults. Uh, Mick is important, and bake, and choose an output, and desktop, uh, PNG, bake, HE. Okay, and then I'll preview and hide the high, and show the low. Let's just make sure that shows the low. Yeah, that's the low one. So you can see how it looks, right? So that was um, with the the hard edges, I think. Just bring the roughness down. Let's put a bit of metallicness so we can really see it, right? So this was the, the hard edged one, right? And we can see how it looks, it all looks fine. Okay, and just to prove, uh, let's just duplicate that whole group and change the low, uh, change the low here for soft edge. Right, and I'll bake this one and I'll call it uh, bake. Uh, SE PNG okay and okay everything's good uh, just let's see the meshes um, low high and just make sure the cage opacity and uh, yeah obviously it's already encompassing it and then let's do a bake and preview, All right? And uh, hide the high poly, obviously, should be true. So, yeah, so I'll open both of these up. We've got the low poly here, Let's enable that, All right? The low poly box here, I'll just move that aside and just make sure I put the right uh, material on it. So, I'll just duplicate this. And I'll grab the correct normal map. And you can see how the normal maps look. This one's compensating for the softened normals, and this one is utilizing the normals that are there. Now, everything looks fine only because um, I've got my UVs split in these sections, but what if I didn't? Right, so let's just um, apply that here. Right, and they more or less look the same, they're pretty identical. These are the low poly ones, by the way. So they look high poly. Right, sometimes you get a little line. 
So I don't know if you can see it here. So this is the, the hard edge one. And just where the the mesh changes, you can see this little edge here, right? The hard edge is still kind of there. Now if we look at the soft edge one, it's there as well, right? It's not as obvious. I find it's not quite as obvious, but maybe it is. I could be lying. Right, let's just say for the sake of argument, they're the same, right? So all your hard edges need to be seams, basically. And if they're not, let's just show you what I mean by that. So let's go to one of the little polys, unwrap, open the UVs, and let's combine uh, two edges. So I'll take these two, uh, or whatever one is neighbor to that one, this one and I will stitch selected. All right, I'll take this one and this one, stitch selected, right? And let's just do this one and this one, stitch selected. So they are all joined together, right? The only seam is this edge. I'll do the same for the other mesh, I'll just copy the UVs. So that was low box uh, SE, and now we want hard edge one, and I'll just paste the unwrap and open the UV edit and just make sure that looks the same. Cool, so that's done. And that's done. Let's just make sure they're still the same. Yeah, we've got the hard edges here. Right, so the only difference now is my seam is just in one place. Right, let's see what happens now. I'm gonna export selected to uh, the boxes. Okay, same, everything the same. And come back into Marmoset and let's reload all the meshes, so uh, I have to open them up here, or here, okay, this one, reload, right, and nothing's actually changed at this point, right, but let's rebake some things, so I'm going to move all of these back to zero, and let's just unhide everything like that, okay, so I will close that group, and oh i think um i need to yeah i need to also because i think it made copies of that so the low one and there and you can see that's changed the uvs now that's it and that one in there and the high doesn't matter we've got that already um cool right so ignore the materials just now because they are these need updated but if i bake uh, bake Hitchy and bake the this is actually the low but anyway I'll bake that one right and I've written preview so now let's hide the high let's enable that one right okay and let's make sure I've got the correct material Oh, that one should be that one. Alright. Cool. So now I've got uh, a problem. So where the UVs are being shared, we get a really obvious line. All right. And now look at the, this is the soft edge one. Okay. The soft edged one. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if the UVs are joined. Right, doesn't matter. It still does the same job. You see the edge a tiny bit, right? That, but you get that with. So you see it there. It's just the shape of the model. You get that with both methods. So the only difference is if you've got the hard edge, and the UVs are being uh, connected together, you're really going to see this noticeable bump, bump, right? Because they're kind of sharing uh, this direction coming from the texture. 
right? That's been sort of transferred between those. So if you imagine the the UVs of the uh, this one, right? It uh, doesn't really matter which one. If I open up the UVs and where these connect, so imagine there's a normal color, right? Blue is your everything's fine and then it starts to bend here to make that high poly looking effect, right? And it gets to here and then it has to bend the other way for this polygon. So this little point in between is getting kind of shared between these. You know, you could make the, the texture high resolution, it might fix it, but uh, it just reads a bit sharper than, than that. And you can see it's kind of raggedy. If you look up close, you see it's got this line right now if i rebake the texture um let's just move these back to zero so i can bake again i'll just do it for in fact let's just do it for the problem one which is uh yeah this one so yeah the hard edge one is going to move that back to zero and let's bring the resolution up and everything so i'll do 8192, I'll change that to 64, and then I'm going to do bake. Alright, uh, let's see if that updates here. Right, that's updated, so I'm just going to move the low poly out again. Uh, just move that mesh out. Right, so now with a higher resolution texture, we still see the line. It doesn't matter how much you try. So it's like a pixel's worth being sort of transferred between those faces. You have to split um, the UVs. Right, so if you are using a hard edge, um, you have to also have the UVs split. If you're not using the hard edge, i.e. the soften normals, you don't have to worry about the UVs. So this is why softening the normals is beneficial. It's better because uh, you don't have to worry about the UVs is the the main reason, right? Because you don't want these little artifacts of uh, this line and you're kind of puzzled to why. And it's more obvious. It's more obvious the lower the texture size. So if I go for 1024, right, and then bake that, Oh, I baked with the wrong position, so that's not going to catch it. Let's do zero and then bake. Okay, and then I'll let me drag that out again. Right, you see it much more obvious because the texture size is uh, smaller. You see it at more, dis more distance, so very similar to you having less texel density uh, for that part of the mesh and it might even be much lower than that to be honest so let's just try another test uh, I'm going to move that back change the this all the way down to let's say it's 256 pixels would fit in there and then bake that alright and then I'll just I'll hide the high poly actually if it will let me it doesn't let me uh, I'll hide it here. Right. Let's actually hide that group. So now you can see how that looks. It's really obvious, the hard edge. I'll do the same thing for the the soft edge one. Let's just call this S E soft edged. Um, bring all these on. Make sure our mesh is in the same place change your resolution down let's do two five six bring that to one all right and do a bake and you can see uh you can see a little bit there's just the mesh but it's nowhere near as bad as um this one let's move that again helps if you can see it why can't we see it? Ah, yep. Okay, I'm going to move that out there. Let's hide the high, hide the high. Alright, so this is the soft edged one. 
and this is the hard edged one so you can really see the artifact of the the you know the swapping of the pixels if you like this, this trying to bend round but then so is this and they're so close the pixels are so close together that they kind of a different value than what they should be whereas this one works better so even if you go further out you can still see that line this one's kind of gone looks okay and we're only, it's just these bits we're kind of looking at the top not these front bits because that's where the uv's got joined all right and you can see it turns into almost a black line there whereas this one stays nice and crisp all right and that's why every 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 hard edge kind of needs to be uh uh every hard edge needs to be a split but not every split every UV split needs to be a hard edge. I think that's the, the slogan, uh, what they say. Um, but the the best way to get around it is to soften all the normals. And that's it. So that's it for this video. I hope it helped. And uh, I'll catch you later. Bye.